Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song broadcast for this 16th day of October, and it is Monday, and today's topic is titled, He Intercedes, and He sure does. That's Jesus Christ being spoken of here in this uh, message, I'm most likely sure, because um, He's the only one that can intercede for us, and nobody else can, so praise the Lord for that, and so before we get into that topic here, let me... Put that aside there, and greet you as always, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by him. As he said, I am the way, and he sure is, and no other way but Jesus. So come to him, and he'll wash away all your sin, and give you eternal life, and then he'll show you how to live a Christ-like life for him, and have a great relationship with him as you desire to do so and all that good stuff okay so we're going to start with today's scripture song from james 4 13 and 14 and encourage you to go read all of james chapter 4 and uh we will start here with the scripture song and sing along with brother dean and sister patty so here we go james 4 13 and 14 Go, go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city, and continue there a year, and buy and sell, and get gain, whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, then vanisheth away. Sure does. Go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. As ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? What is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and vanish, vanish it away. What is your life? a vapor and vanishes away and so that's why you need to get saved today if you're not already and if you've gone by the wayside and you are saved it's time to get back on track because you never know what's going to happen today or tomorrow or the next day and uh, make sure you're prepared and ready and all that good stuff and serving the Lord because you never know when Jesus is going to come and catch us away and so make sure you're ready for all that and keeping our eyes and hearts and minds on Jesus. So that is that. And we'll put that aside and do that again towards the end of the broadcast. Those scripture songs. And now it's time to get into today's Baptist Bread topic for Monday, October 16th. Titled, He Intercedes. And we have here in Romans 8.27. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. That's capital S Spirit. Holy Spirit. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God Romans 8 27 and so I encourage you to read all of uh, Romans chapter 8 and uh, that's uh, speaking about Jesus and the Holy Spirit and uh, all that so today's author is J.O. that would be the initials for J.O. let's look here and that would be John O'Malley President of WWW, or WWNTBM, uh, Kings Mountain, North Carolina. I'm not sure what that's the initials for. And uh, so let me read you what he wrote here on the topic of He Intercedes. He writes here, Dear reader, as you face this day and every day, consider this. He is praying for you, right? So even when we don't know how to pray, the Lord is always praying for us and interceding for us. Praise the Lord for that. 
And he continues on, he says, Have you ever felt the strength in your soul surge when you find out a friend had prayed for you? Uh, you during a struggle, a uh, struggle. Hmm. Uh, there you were in a spiritual battle, and somewhere down the street, across town, or halfway around the world, someone was interceding with God in your behalf. The child of God would do well to consider that, even when our prayer patterns on this side of eternity may not be able to pray, Christ is praying for us. Hallelujah! But this man, because he continueth ever hath an unchangeable priesthood, wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them, Hebrews 7, 24 and 25. Oh, how the heart leaps for joy with this verse. Amen. Christ makes intercession for us according to the will of God. He knows our hearts because of us searching our hearts. So that's true. He knows the mind of the Spirit because of his relationship with him in the Godhead. And Christ is praying for me. Amen. He's praying for you too. If you're saved, that is. Jesus is concerned with every aspect of my life and yours. And he concludes with this. You will make it today, dear friend. Christ is praying for you. Hallelujah. And praise the Lord. So even when we don't know how to pray and we get weary in praying, which we don't, we shouldn't do. God is always making intercession for us. Christ is praying for you and for me. So, glory be to God for that. Alright, so that is the end of that topic there. And aren't you glad that the Lord is always praying for us and making intercession for us when we don't know how to pray and we're not praying for the right things all the time and so on and so forth. That He's always there. Okay, doing that for us. And now it's time to get into uh, today's uh, topic here as we are on this second week of patience. Patience continued, and this is week 37 in the um, Daily Strength Volume 1 book by Douglas D. Stoffer and Andrew B. Ray. And yesterday we went over the introductory stuff for this second week on patience. And today is day 254, Monday, and it is titled, Wait Patiently for the Lord. And it says here in Psalm 37, 7, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. So, amen. Psalm 37, 7. So let's see here. I believe this is a Psalm of David. So let me look here really quick. And Psalm 37. So let's see. Psalm 37. And it says a Psalm of David. That's right. So a Psalm of David. And this has 40 uh, verses here to it. But I'll read you the first verse here. And it says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither uh, as the green herb. And then verse 3 says, Trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy ways unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Amen. And then verse 6 says, And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth uh, wicked devices to pass and that was uh, the verse um, from the topic today so those are a few extra verses for you and now let me get into the introductory thoughts it says here in this psalm david spoke of a perceived injustice that even today tempts many believers to envy david recognized the prosperity of the wicked and the corresponding trials of the righteous Yet believers are admonished to rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Why would the righteous be instructed to wait patiently? Because yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be, Psalm 37.10. The Lord in his time will work everything out. As believers, we will face trials. There are going to be times of injustice. There are going to be times of loss and mourning. However, we can wait patiently, knowing that the Lord 
will right everything wrong and settle every injustice. Amen to that. So let's keep waiting for him and trusting him. And uh, these trials and persecutions that uh, you might be facing or I might be facing, uh, wherever you're at. And so I pray for brothers and sisters in Christ that are facing these persecutions here. So, all right. So that was the end of the introductory thoughts. And now for the devotional thoughts. It says here for children, the Apostle Paul told the Christians at Rome to do good to those who did them wrong and not to respond with evil. Why would he say this? Because the Bible says that vengeance belongs to God. Romans 12, 14, 17, and 19. So let's read these passages here really quick. In Romans uh, chapter 12. All right, so Romans chapter 12. Let's go there really quick. Romans 12. And the first verse was 12, 14. And it says here, Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. And then verse 17 says, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. And then verse 19 uh, says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Amen. And then let's read verse 20 and 21. It says, Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in do so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. All right, so give you some extra verses there. And that was for children. And, of course, you can apply that to everyone, both children and adults. And now, uh, devotional thoughts for everyone. It says, what trials do you face? So what trial, trials are you facing today? What causes you to fret? Are you waiting on the Lord in these areas? Are you exemplifying patience in your waiting on the Lord? Do you murmur and complain about what you perceive as the Lord's delay in responding to your needs? Ooh, and we shouldn't murmur and complain because the Lord is doing things in His time, not ours. So it says in Deuteronomy 8.2, the Bible reveals that God led the Israelites through the wilderness to prove them it is is it possible that the Lord might allow you to go through trials to prove your patience hmm perhaps all right so that was the devotional thoughts and now for prayer thoughts uh, the first prayer thought is it says here ask God to help you patiently wait on him and then the second prayer thought is ask the Lord to help you trust him more in times of trial and then the song from the book uh, is titled be still my soul and that is a good hymn and that will be the second one for today and then the first one is a good hymn too so both of these hymns are really good today and so we'll put this here and we'll sing these hymns and this first one is titled constantly abiding and this is hymn 529 in the psalms and hymns and spiritual songs book another one of these the comfort for the saint hymns and this is a spiritual song Written by Anne S. Murphy, 1878 to 1942, writing as Mrs. Will L. Murphy. And then again, Anne Murphy, 1878 to 1942, composing as Mrs. Will L. Murphy. So, here we go. Let me press play here and we'll try to sing along with this the best we can. Mm hmm. There's a peace in my heart that the world never gave, a peace it cannot take away. Though the trials of life may surround like a cloud, I have a peace that has come there to stay. Constantly abiding, Jesus is mine, constantly abiding, rapture divine. He never leaves me lonely, whispers oh so kind. I will never leave thee, 
Jesus is mine. All the world seems to sing of a Savior and King. Oh, sweetly came to my heart, uh, my heart. Troubles all fled away, and my night turned to day. Blessed Jesus, how glorious Thou art. Constantly abiding, constantly abiding. Jesus is mine, yes, Jesus is mine. Constantly abiding, constantly abiding. Rapture divine, oh, rapture divine. He never leaves me, never leaves me lonely. Whispers, whispers, oh, so kind. I will never, never leave thee. Jesus, Jesus is mine. This treasure I have in a temple of clay, while here on his footstool I roam. But he's coming to take me some glorious day over there to my heavenly home. Constantly abiding, Jesus is mine. Constantly abiding, rapture divine. He never leaves me lonely, whispers oh so kind. I will never leave thee, Jesus is mine. Praise the Lord. Sorry if I'm kind of goofing up on that uh, middle uh, stanza there. So that is the hymn, and now let me read you the story here at the bottom, and then give you the references for this first hymn. So it says here, In times of success, Anne found that Christ was all that could satisfy, praise the Lord, and he sure is. In times of loss, she found he was all upon which to rely. So, alright, so satisfy in times of success, and rely on times of loss, and so praise the Lord for that. Okay, so continuing on here in the uh, story down here, it says, Anne Sebring was born into a prosperous family. The Sebrings founded the town bearing their name in Ohio in 1898. There they opened five uh, poet, uh, pottery plants and employed more than 3,000. Father George Sebring hoped it might be a welcome abode for retiring servants of the master. Uh, here the Sebring sons built homes in the community. Their sister married William Murphy, a prominent financial figure. Uh, business was expanding and all seemed well. In 1908, Mrs. Murphy composed lyrics and a melody of constantly abiding. Little did she know what was yet to come. Two decades later, the Great Depression wiped out the multi-million dollar business, and about the same time, William Murphy perished in uh, death, destitute, and removed to relatives in California. Yet, shortly before she died, she still gave testimony of heaven's perfect peace, living outwardly what she had known inwardly many years before. Well, praise the Lord. All right, so that's an encouraging story there. Never to give up or give in and keep on going until the very last breath, whether it be in death or in the rapture. Amen. Okay, so that was a good story there. And now the references here we have for stanza 1, John 14, 27, John 16, 33. And then stanza 2, we have Romans 5, 1. And in stanza 3, we have 2 Corinthians 4, 6-7, Isaiah 66, 1, and John 14, 1-3. And then for the refrain, we have one reference here, John 14, 16. So that is the end of the first hymn, Constantly Abiding. And now we're going to jump ahead a little bit to this second hymn. 
and this is be still my soul and so let me go here and look this one up again all right so be still my soul and there is uh five stanzas here i'm not sure if we'll be able to do all of these with the instrumental so let's see here let's try Okay, so we'll do this one. Make sure there's no ads. Okay, so good. No ads for this one. So we'll turn this back up. I'm trying to get this back to the beginning. Alright, so this is Be Still My Soul. And this is hymn 654 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. And this is one of these hymns, The Trust of the Saint Hymns, a spiritual song written by uh, uh, Katharina von uh, Sh uh, Sh Sh Schigel, uh, Schigel, S C H L E G E L, Schigel, in 1697 to 1768, translated by Jane L. Ba uh, Borthwick, Borthwick, uh, B O R T H W I C K, Borthwick, 1813 to 1897, and then Jean Sibelius. S I B E L I U S. A lot of interesting last names here to pronounce. So 1865 to 1957 is when all these uh, women lived. So um, around these times here in the 1600s, 1700s, 1800s, up to the mid 1900s. So, all right. So let me go ahead and press play and try to sing along most of this with the instrumental. I have to do some a cappella, so we'll see how it goes. <clears throat> Be still, my soul, the Lord is on thy side. Bear patiently the cross of grief and pain. Leave to thy God to order and provide in every change he faithful will remain be still my soul thy best thy heavenly friend through through thorny ways leads to a joyful end be still, my soul, thy God doth undertake to guide the future as he has the past. Thy hope, thy confidence, let Nothing shake All now mysterious Shall be bring, bring at last Be still my soul The waves and winds still know his voice who ruled them while he dwelt below. Be still, my soul, when dearest friends depart, and all is dark in in the veil of tears 
then shall thou better know his love, his heart. Who comes to soothe thy sorrows and thy fears? Be still, my soul, thy Jesus can repay from his own fullness all he takes away away all right so let's put that back so we can do the last two stanzas sorry there we go for the last two stanzas Be still, my soul, the hour is hastening on, when we shall be forever with the Lord, when disappointment Grief and fear are gone. S sorrow forgot. Love's purest joy is restored. Be still, my soul, when change and tears are past. All safe and blessed, we shall meet at last. Be still, my soul, begin the song of praise. On earth believing to thy Lord. Acknowledge him in all thy works and ways, so shall he view thee with a well-pleased eye. Be still, let my soul the Son of Life Divine Through passing clouds Shall but more brightly shine Be still my soul Let that play out there Amen. Good uh, hymn there. Okay, no story for this one. So let me give you the references and then we'll move back on to the scripture songs uh, again. So let me give you these references here. For stanza 1, we have Romans 8.31, 1 Peter 5.7, 2 
Ma uh, Mark or Matthew, excuse me, Matthew 3 6, and then Proverbs 18 24, and then Psalm 30 verses 1 through 12. Stanza 2 is Isaiah 46 9 through 10, 1 Peter 5 10, 1 Corinthians 13 12, and then Psalm 107 29, and then Mark 4 41. Stanza 3 is 1 Thessalonians 4 13, and 2 Corinthians 1 4. And then 2 Corinthians uh, 1, 3 through 5. And then stanza uh, 4 is John 5, 25. Um, and I think I messed up. So let me go back here and read this again. All right. So stanza 1 is Romans 8, 31, 1 Peter 5, 7, uh, Matthew 3, 6, and Proverbs 18, 24, and then Psalm 30 verses 1 through 12. Stanza 2 is Isaiah 46, 9 through 10. 1 Peter 5, 10. And 1 Corinthians 13, 12. And then uh, Psalm 107, 29. And then uh, Mark 4, 41. And then stanza uh, 3 is 1 Thessalonians 4, 13. And then 2 Corinthians uh, 1, 4. And then... 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 5, and then stanza 4 is John 5, 25, and 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. Okay, I see where I messed up there. I got confused with these 1 Thessalonian passages. So 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, and then Rome, uh, Revelation 21, 3 through 4, and then Psalm 46, 10, and then stanza 5 is only one reference here, 1 Corinthians 3, 14. So... That is the references there for that hymn. And now we'll go ahead and put this aside here for a minute and do the scripture songs again, and then we'll wrap it up for today. So here we go. So yesterday was, let's see here, yesterday was the 15th. And press play there. Luke eleven twenty eight. But he, he said, said Yea, rather, rather, blessed are they, they that hear the, the word, word of God and keep it. But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. It. Hear the word of God and keep, keep it. And that was Jesus responding to this woman he was speaking to that asked him a question or something in Luke eleven twenty seven. James four thirteen and fourteen. All right. Go to now. Ye that say, right. Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. That's right. So we go. go to now, now ye that say, Today or tomorrow. We will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? What is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth, vanisheth away. What is your life? What is your So that is it for today's uh, broadcast. But before I let me uh, go, uh, before I go here, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song, and then the topics for the Baptist bread and daily strength uh, books, and then the hymns for tomorrow. 
So tomorrow will be the 17th, uh, Tuesday, and John 13, 34 through 35 is the uh, scripture song verses, and it says, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. And that's John, or John Jesus speaking in these passages here, and we'll go over these uh, verses here along with some that are around it so we can get some context here of what's uh, being said here and all that so amen all right so that's the scripture song and then the topic for tomorrow for uh, tuesday october 17th is barefooted david and these are on tuesdays uh, for this month here and we already covered two of these already on the past two tuesdays so we started with uh I believe it was barefooted Moses and that was the first one and that was back on let's see that was back on the third barefooted Moses and then we had barefooted Joshua which was on the f Tuesday after that so we had on the third barefooted Moses and then the uh, Tuesday after that was um, the tenth barefooted Joshua and now we have and then we had I think we had one more nope okay so now we're uh, to this one, October 17th, Barefooted David. And then the following Tuesday, we will have, um, after Barefooted David, we have uh, the Barefooted Prodigal. So the Prodigal Son, Barefooted Prodigal. And then after that one, I believe we have one more left after that. And that would be the Barefooted Savior for the last Thursday of the month. So these are on, I mean, not Thursday, but Tuesdays. So these are on every Tuesday throughout this month. So... Check those out if you missed any of those. Um, so uh, go back and check those out on those, those previous, thir uh, t I keep wanting to say Thursday, but it's Tuesday, every Tuesday that uh, these topics are landing on by uh, Rick Gravely, Brother Gravely. So amen. So that will be tomorrow's topic for Tuesday, October 17th. And then 2 Samuel 13 or 15.30 is the passage. So we'll find out more about that tomorrow. And then the Daily Strength Volume 1 book as we're going through the second week on patience. And tomorrow is day 255, Tuesday. And this is titled The God of Patience. And Romans 15, 4 through uh, 5 is the passage there. And then the hymn for tomorrow is Moment by Moment. So that's the hymn from the book. Uh, the second hymn there. And then the first hymn will be titled... Comfort me when I mourn. And not too familiar with this one here. This is one by Charles Wesley. And this is Hymn 530. We've already made it to Hymn 530 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. So that would be the first hymn tomorrow. So I might have to look that one up and um, see if it's available in a full instrumental. If not, I'll have to do the um, partial instrumental on the Melody Publications uh, YouTube channel. So either way, we'll try to. Um, listen to that and sing along with it if it's easy to sing along with and there is only two stanzas here no story for this one so that is from the this book here the psalms and hymns and spiritual songs book and that is uh, that and then the uh, daily strength volumes one through four books are available on melodypublications.com is where you can order those and get that stuff there the books there all right, and then the Scripture Song book and CDs, they should still be available to order online at uh, www.dailyscripturesongs.com. That's Brother Dean and Sister Patty Runyon, uh, Runyon's website, and they are missionaries to Port Kaituma, Guyana, so pray for them and uh, good mission work they're doing out there. All right, so you can check that website out. And then the Baptist Spread devotional book, this is available to order, get a subscription going by going to baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org and then the Bible, the King James Bible, the Word of God. This is the first book we should always be getting into and reading it and studying it and seeking God's face and asking Him to show us what He'd have us to see as we're uh, studying His Word. So praise the Lord for that. All right, so that'll be it for today. So thanks for watching and may the Lord richly bless you until next time. Bye-bye for now.